Hello, church. While I'm not able to be with you in person this Sunday as uh, I'm up with my family on the Oregon coast enjoying a last uh, vacation before the rhythms of school start up again, uh, I'm happy to be able to prepare this sermon for you today. But before we get started, please be with me in the spirit of prayer. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. In 1630, a man named John Winthrop stood aboard a ship called the Arbella, and he addressed the people of all the ships that would become known as Winthrop's fleet. They were called Puritans, and they arrived about 10 years after the pilgrims of Plymouth Colony to form what became known as the Massachusetts Bay Colony. And before they went ashore, Winthrop preached this sermon. He preached it about what they were to do what they were about to do. And, and he told them that this new community that they would form would be like a city on a hill, one that would be looked at by the whole world. And he said that because he, he knew that they needed to be careful that this whole experiment not end in what he called a shipwreck. Now, today we might call, that a, a, call it a train wreck, but, you know, they didn't have trains back in that day, so shipwreck it was. In other words, what he was saying was, don't screw this up, folks because everyone's watching us, okay? Yeah, no pressure. And you know, nearly 400 years later, Americans still talk about how we are called to be a shining city on a hill, an example of what, of what a good society can look like. And 400 years, friends, is a long time for an idea to percolate. But you know, it's not even a quarter as long as the idea of the city on a hill has actually been around. For that, you gotta go all the way back to Jesus Christ himself. And so, as we begin this second in a mini sermon series about being faithful citizens, this is kind of the direction we're heading today. Jesus was giving what became known as his Sermon on the Mount, and he just finished teaching the Beatitudes. Blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are those who are persecuted, and so on. And he immediately tells the people, you are the salt of the earth. Now, to say that is, a, is high praise because salt was rare and it was highly valued in those days. And he tells them, you are the light of the world and a city built on a hill cannot be hidden. And just like that old song we sing sometimes, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. He tells them that they can't put a basket over their light and hide it. They just can't do that. They have to let their light shine. Not so that they would be praised, but so that God would be praised. And it's that passage that John Winthrop was talking about when he preached that sermon to those Puritans about to settle the new world. And they were about to go ashore and build a city that the whole world would be watching in his eyes. And so using Jesus' words, he told them, don't hide your light then. Make sure that this place that we're going to build together will shine brightly so that people can't help but see it. And all these centuries later, you know, in this era of 24-hour news and internet, and, and we, we live in this country where that everyone is watching all the time. We can't help but be noticed. Maybe we're one of a handful of countries that's consistently on the global radar, maybe more than any other. We are watched and analyzed, loved and hated. And at our best, we are a country that shines our light for good and in a place of hope and freedom. One that still draws immigrants to our shores because of those promises. But that doesn't mean that our light is always shining. This country has had times when that light's been obscured by baskets that we've often put over it. Baskets like hatred, inequality, violence, systemic poverty, others. In our worst moments, we're a shining example of what not to do. That's what we talked about last week when we admitted that sometimes not all is well where we live. And we have to tell the truth about that before anything can actually change. The good news, though, is that by telling the truth, we have a chance to kind of kick over those baskets that are hiding our light and change the story, change the narrative, and to make this city on the hill shine, maybe as it never has before. But that starts with us. Because that city on the hill, it's got to be filled with people on the hill, too. The city will only be as good as the people who build it. 
And so like Jesus said, we need to become like the salt of the earth. And for those of us who are Christians, that means we need to draw on our best values, the ones given to us by our faith, and use those things to inform the way that we will be citizens in our country. Now, John Winthrop himself had an idea of where we should look for those values. And in his sermon that day, he quoted an Old Testament prophet, Micah, whose words we just heard before this sermon. And speaking to a city in distress, one that had lost its way and was trying to get back on track, Micah asked rhetorically, what does God require of you? And the answer wasn't burnt offerings or sacrifices or converting people or anything like that. Instead, it was just these three things. Do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly. It almost sounds too simple, right? But it's harder than it looks. Because what would it look like if we demanded those three things of ourselves in our everyday lives? Like, how would we do justice? Would we seek to be more fair to the people that we deal with in business? Would we look at people who weren't treated as equals and, and, and maybe advocate for them? Would we speak up when we hear someone use words that demean others? And what about kindness? This is the same words in some translations is, 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 is named mercy. So, so would we be kind and merciful? I mean, would we hold the door open maybe or oh, let that person, you know, merge in traffic in front of us? Or more seriously, would we stop maybe withholding words that could heal? Would we look at those who suffer and choose mercy over words of blame? And what about humility? And by this, I mean real humility, which is understanding that none of us is any more or less beloved by God than, than anyone else. And if we walk through the world with that kind of humility, how would it change us? Would we be less judgmental of differences? Would we be more apt to value character over someone's fame? Would we be more aware about what was good for all and not just good for us? Micah gave us a prescription for what ails us, and he told us clearly how to get better. But as much as, as those three things sound as simple as, I don't know, an episode of Mr. Rogers, it is not easy medicine to get down, because justice, kindness, and humility are wonderful things, but they all take a lot of hard work, and every day you have to recommit to them. Every day we have to use them to kick aside all those baskets that are covering our light. But more than that, if we really want to be a city on a hill, it's not enough that we commit ourselves to these things. It's not just about me or you. It's about we need to ask them of our leaders. Christian values is a phrase that gets tossed about way too much in politics. And it often comes to mean a very specific set of beliefs and priorities, one that really that only some Christians agree about. But what would our national political stage look like if we took this bedrock of our faith, these real Christian values, and demanded them of our leaders, what am I talking about? I'm saying, what would happen if we refused anything less than real justice, real kindness, and real humility? Yeah, I know it sounds naive, especially in days like these, but if enough of us demanded it, things would start to change, and so would our leaders. So I'll close with this. I've talked about John Winthrop and probably too much history the last couple weeks and his sermon that he gave. You know, he went on to become the governor of the Massachusetts Bay Colony, a very powerful man. But he would also become a man who didn't always live up to Micah's call for justice, kindness, and humility. And because of that, real people's lives were affected for the worse. And one of those people was a man named Reverend John Wheelwright. If you're an aficionado of early American history, maybe you've heard this name. But back in 1638, John Wheelwright was banished to, at that time, what was the frontier hill country of New Hampshire. And you know why? Because he'd become too religiously tolerant and works-focused in the eyes of Governor Winthrop. And actually, it was Wheelwright's sister-in-law, Anne Hutchinson, who was also banished about that same time, but she was sent south to a place that became Rhode Island. 
But here's the deal. The truth is, John Winthrop got it wrong. And 17 years later, Reverend Wheelwright was completely exonerated. And here's the deal. The truth is, many of our leaders get it wrong sometimes. It doesn't matter if they're famous or unknown. All of them get it wrong. And in the face of that, it's easy for us as citizens sometimes to feel powerless. I'm sure that people like John Wheelwright and Ann Hutchinson felt powerless, but we're not powerless. We have the ability to continue to build up our city on the hill and to transform it for the good. We have the ability to become the servant leaders who make sure that the light keeps shining, even when others uh, would obscure it. To be a Christian and a citizen is, is never to be without hope and never to be without responsibility. You know, when I think back to the ones who founded this church in 1875, led by the Reverend Hiram Cummings, I think of the hope and the responsibility that they sought to manifest. And nearly 150 years later, I hope when people look at us as a church that they still see that hope and that light. And I hope that we, as Christians and as citizens, will only do the things that would help that light to shine here in our city, and, and, and far beyond. Amen. Amen.